But, but witchcraft is, is more or less the same thing as magic, except magic is, is higher, if you will. Witches believe magic comes within them, or that it comes from being at one with the earth and at one with the sky and this kind of pantheistic thing where, you know, kind of like the Force in Star Wars, you know. But actually, there is a real power in witchcraft, but the power comes from the demonic realm. If you say... You know, if you if you give yourself over to these gods, these ancient gods, and say I'm going to serve you, what they don't realize is that behind those those gods are a mask, and behind those masks is the demonic. Okay, and how do you know that? Because a lot of people who maybe are into witchcraft mm -hmm. are going to say, well, that's not true. Well, let me give you an illustration. Um, this this a friend of mine, colleague in the ministry, was on a radio show. And he was talking about this very subject. And a witch high priest called up and challenged him with the very question you asked. He said, well, I don't believe my powers come from demons. I believe my powers come from the, the sky god and the mother goddess. And my friend said, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray right now in the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, that all the demons in you that give you the power to do these things will be bound for one week. 
until you come to your senses. And he prayed that prayer right over the air, and the guy just got mad and hung up. Two or three days later, the guy called the show. He wasn't even on, my friend wasn't even there. And the guy was frantic because he had nowhere else to call. And he says, I don't have my occult power anymore. It's been gone from the very day you prayed that prayer. And as I said earlier, I came to this fork in the road where I could choose to either be a vampire or a werewolf. For reasons that should now be obvious, I chose vampire. So one of my satanic mentors took me down to this very, very strange church in Chicago where I was first exposed to what is called the Nosferatic Current. See, in, in high-level magic, it's believed there's these different currents that flow kind of like different streams within a river. And there's a werewolf current, there's a thalamic current, there's a vampire current. And so through this, I was introduced to the guy who would eventually bring me into this cult. I was prepared with a bunch of magical exercises, given a strange cocktail of herbs, which I will not discuss because I don't want anybody trying this at home, uh, and lots and lots of vitamin B12, and lots and lots and lots and lots of cocaine. <clears throat> and this was intended to gradually transform me into something other than human. So after a few months of this, um, this being came to our temple. We had a temple in our home up on the north side of Milwaukee. And he drank from my neck. He gashed open his chest. Blood poured out, and I drank from his chest. And then I laid in a coffin that I had specially built. It wasn't just a coffin. You go down to your funeral home and buy a, you know, a garden variety coffin. Casket, I guess they prefer to call it. Uh, it was specially designed, measurements down to the millimeter. Certain angles, certain geometries. Look, let me ask you something. Why do you think caskets... The old coffins you used to see like in like westerns or whatever, why are they shaped like that? What are they? They're two trapezoids. One like this and one like this. What is the trapezoid, you might ask? The trapezoid is the key symbol of the Church of Satan. The inner order that I was a member of of the Church of Satan as a second degree warlock was called the Order of the Trapezoid. That's why haunted houses are typically with mansard roofs, like the Adams family house. Those are called mansard roofs. Perfect place for demons to come in. Trapezoids attract demons. This was a, an alchemical crucible that I would sleep in that would gradually turn me into a vampire. It had magical glyphs all over the inside of it. After three days, I rose from this coffin as a vampire initiate. I was not a full-blown vampire. As I mentioned earlier, that would not happen until I finally died. But I could not drink anything but blood. I could not eat anything but Holy Communion from a Catholic Mass. Fortunately, I was a Roman Catholic priest in the old Roman Rite, so I just said Mass every day. Fortunately, I had a whole bunch of women in my coven, hundreds of them, about seven or eight of which were the high-level women that were more than delighted to let me bite them in the neck. <laughs> 